there. Today I am going to show you how I made these pemmican little cupcakes, I guess. Um, if you don't know what pemmican is, it is a um, dried meat in fat, basically, that was has originated from Canada and North America. Um, the Indians there used to make this and survive on it through the winter um, because they have lots of snow and ice there in the winter and obviously uh, not much hunting to be done at that time of year. And so pemmican was something I had actually never heard of until I was kind of got involved in the carnival community and I was like, what is pemmican? Because it's a really weird name. Um, and they told me it was a basically a um, survival food. This stuff will last for years if it's made and stored correctly. Um, and so I'm planning on making some and uh, keeping it in some airtight containers. And also it's perfect if you're going out for the day or, um, you know, going for a tramp or something like that and want to take something with you um, to eat on the way, something that's not going to spoil or go off. And it's funny because I have seen in America they have uh, carnival bars and I wondered how they made those and that's obviously what this is but just made commercially and sold. So um, so I'll show you how to make these and also the ratios, uh, how to work out your ratios for protein to fat if you want to do that because traditionally these have been made but pretty much 50-50 I believe. Today I'm making mine 70-30 so 70% 70 fat and 30% protein. Um, you might want to make it a higher amount of fat. I'm currently uh, have been doing a higher fat version of carnivore, which I've been kind of sticking to around 70 to 80 percent fat. I just thought 80 percent fat in these might be a little bit too much, and um, just for my tastes, I've got flies hanging around. Um, just for my tastes, and so I decided to stick with the 70 30. But I'll show you how to adjust that and work out your ratios. So let's get started. Um, I started this process a couple of days ago and I decided to try it with ground meat first. So I don't know what my um, meat to fat ratio is in my ground meat. Here in New Zealand we basically just have prime mints and a budget mints uh, and the budget mints tends to have more fat in it. Uh, but I don't know that the butchers here are actually strict to a specific ratio for that and it's never on the packaging. Um, the mince that I'm using is actually um, home kill, so it was from my son's cow, and so it was processed by the butchers that do the um, home kill meat, and it it feels quite fatty, but it's not a huge amount of fat in that, I don't think, and I haven't had much dripping out of the uh, meat while it's been drying. So I've, I've pulled my meat out um, after about 28 hours originally and some of it was still a bit damp. Uh, for this process you want your meat to be really really dry like almost crispy so that you can blend it into a powder. Traditionally apparently it was done you know like you could do it in a mortar pestle. It was done probably I guess traditionally like between rocks kind of thing to grind that up. Um, today I'm going to be using my Thermomix um, but you can use a mortar and pestle, you can use any kind of blender or chopping type thing that you have in the house really I guess but it's just making sure that the meat is actually dry enough. So I'm going to pull my meat out of my dehydrator because it is now finished. It has been um, about 42 hours I think um, all up. Probably didn't need to be quite that long but I left it overnight again and so I figured the drier the better, it's not going to hurt. So I used my Ninja Foodi, you can see over behind me, uh, for most of the drying process. But when I needed to use that, I just took the meat out uh, on the racks and actually popped it in the oven, just on fan bake on 50 degrees and um, kept it in there for as long as I needed to. And then when the Ninja was free, I'd pop it back in the Ninja. Um, so I will link to the model Ninja Foodi that I've got below. It's our favourite appliance and we use the thing every day. So I used the Ninja on dehydrate mode uh, on 50 degrees and as I said it was about 48 hours or so, for, uh, 42 hours I think all up. So you can see my meat here on the racks. I'll show you the process that I went through to, to do this um, and I'll pop that piece of video in here.
I'll pop in another piece of video showing how hard it was to actually get, get it off these wire racks because I didn't think about the fact that it was being pushed through the mesh. And so it's actually been quite difficult to get it off. And um, yesterday when I was trying, I took most of it off the racks yesterday. And I'll show you um, a piece of video here of me doing that. My ground beef has been drying for uh, a bit over 24 hours, probably uh, maybe about 28 hours. And I think it's dry enough. It's going to be a bit, of, a bit hard to get off these trays though, I think, um, because I didn't think about the fact that I was actually pushing the meat down into the little holes in the wire mesh. So <laughs> I'll have to rethink that the next time I'll probably flatten it onto some um, baking paper and get it the size that I want it and then put the mesh over the top, flip it over and take the paper off is what I'm thinking I will do the next time. But I'm going to try and get this um, dried meat off of my mesh racks and we'll see how that goes. Pretty much dry enough. It is um, it's quite dry. I may have to put it back in for a little bit longer. Perhaps you can kind of feel that it's it's oily, uh, which is kind of making me wonder if it's maybe not quite dry enough. But we'll see. And as you can see, it was quite a challenge getting it off the racks. Um, didn't take as long as I thought it might, but it was still a bit of a mission. So this top one was actually the wettest, so I left that on the rack. But the rest of them I've actually taken off and just put them back in in pieces sitting on the racks. Now, next time I do this, if I do it with ground beef, I think I will actually flatten the ground beef on a piece of baking paper about the size of these racks and I'll flatten it all down and then I can put the rack on top, flip it over and take the baking paper off and that way it won't need to be pushed down into the mesh and so that way it should come off nice and easy. So this is really nice and dry now, it's quite crispy and so I'm just going to take all of this and I'm going to pop it into my Thermomix jug because that's where I'm going to blend it up. So I have all of my um, ground beef in my Thermomix jug. If you're using a less powerful blender, I'd probably suggest blending a little bit at a time. The Thermomix, the Thermomix is pretty good at um, blending so, um, and chopping. So I think that this will probably be fine for me to have it full. I'll find out in a minute. Um, so this, a lot of people make like a jerky out of ground beef and having a taste like I did put salt on this when I put it down but it hasn't got enough salt for me so I'm actually going to add some salt to this when I um, chop it up because I think that otherwise if I don't do that I probably won't eat it because it's not going to be salty enough for me I like my food salty and my meat salty 
Um, and I think if I was going to make a jerky with this, with the ground beef, I'd probably add maybe some garlic or herbs or spices of some sort um, because the the flavour's okay, but it's not something that I I'd, um, that I actually love. So um, yeah, I'd probably add something to it. But for this, I'm just going to add salt. Yo, now yeah. I have been eating a uh, high fat carnivore diet at the moment, which is 80-20, and I thought about making it 80%, but I'm not sure if it's if that would be too much and if it, if that's something that I would eat or whether it would just end up getting wasted. You know, I believe it's normally made about 50-50, about half and half. Um, there's usually just enough fat to kind of coat all the meat because the fat helps to um, preserve the meat so there's usually enough to, to do that um, but I will show you how I work that out All right, so I'm. I think that's probably enough. Um, so you'll see, it's quite finely chopped. It's like it's almost like it's been grated. So I ended up putting it up to seven on the Thermomix. Uh, on five, it was still quite coarse. Um, it could go finer, you know. I mean, some people make it into a powder, but I think to have a little bit of texture in there is probably um, a good idea. So um, I am now going to work out my fat. So this was. Um, originally, so the meat was originally 600, about 640 grams raw weight of ground beef, and so I need to work out how much fat I need to add to that. Just popped it back in and ground up a little bit more. It's still, it's still um, got a bit of texture to it, but I just did a few seconds on nine, and also I, I added a bit more salt to it before I started grinding it up, just a couple of reasonable sized pinches of salt. It probably would have been about another maybe half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of salt. And um, so it's got quite a nice flavour now with the salt. All right, so um, I've got my fat. This is what I'm using. Um, we get this, and there's a couple of different brands here in New Zealand. They're made by the same company. Um, and so these are, according to the website, these are actually made from suet which I didn't realise until recently because I've been trying to find a source for suet and I use this stuff all the time. I use it to make my tallow balm and um, we use it for cooking and I use it to make you know mayo and all that sort of stuff. Um, and I was looking on their website and realised that uh, it's actually suet. So I was quite happy about that because suet contains a higher amount of uh, stearic acid than just the other fat in the animal. So the suet is the fat from around the kidneys. So um, yeah, so I was quite pleased to actually discover that. So let's have a look at how um, I worked out how much fat. So I'm actually doing 70, 30. Uh, I, I changed my mind from the 60, 40 to 70, 30. So um, I, the way that I've come up with the amount of fat, so this container holds 454 grams, which was uh, more than what I needed. Um, so let's have a look at how we work this out. So I started off with 640 grams of ground beef. Okay. Now, as I said, I'm not sure what percentage the fat is in that ground beef. So I'm kind of just taking an average of sort of 80, 85%. Um, and I used Carb Manager to kind of work out what the what the uh, amount of protein is likely to be in that. So um, I came up with a 170 grams worth of protein. Now, the thing that we need to remember is that each gram of protein contains four calories. Each gram of fat contains about nine calories, all right? So the way to work this out is I've got 170 grams of protein. So if I multiply that by four, that gives me my total number of calories for my protein, which is 680. Now that 680 calories, because I'm wanting this to be 70, 30, that 680 calories needs to be 30% of my total batch. And to work out um, how much fat I need, so the fat needs to be 70%, the protein needs to be 30%. So to work out how much that is, I multiply the 680 calories from the protein by 100, which gives me 68,000. And then I divide that by 30. And that gives me my total number of calories for my batch of 
of um, product, all right? So that total number is 2266.66, so basically 2267 is, I've rounded it up. So we've got 2,267 total calories in the batch. Now, if I do, um, subtract 680 calories, so I've got the, the total number of calories and I'm uh, removing the 680 calories worth of protein, that'll give me the amount of calories worth of fat that I need to have. So that total is 1,587 calories worth of fat. And because fat is about 9 calories per gram, we just divide that 1,587 by 9. And what I am left with is 176 grams of fat. So that is what I have in here. I'm just going to go and melt that, and then I can combine those together. Now, of course, if you wanted a different ratio, all you would do is swap out that um, the number, the amount of protein, so where I've got 30, if you wanted 20%, you would just uh, divide by 20. If you wanted 50%, you would divide by 50, basically, and that's how that works. Okay, so I have got my um, ground beef and I have my melted uh, tallow in here and I am going to now combine them together. Alright, so I have my ground beef in here and I'm just going to pop that into this bowl. Couple of crazy blowflies flying around at the moment. I think they like the smell of this meat. And then I'm going to add my tallow into there. And I'm going to combine that really well um, because you want to make sure that the all of the meat is completely coated in the the melted fat. Because if, especially if you're going to store this, that is the that is what actually keeps the meat and helps to preserve it. Apart from the fact that it's dried, the um, it's the tallow that helps it to keep. Because as I said, it will keep apparently for years. All right, so that is really well combined. And now I'm going to pop it into um, some muffin pan, a muffin a muffin tray. I don't actually own a cookie sheet these days, um, so I may have to buy one. But for now, because this isn't a very big batch, so hopefully it will fit in these, because it needs to be packed in pretty tightly. Flies are driving me a bit crazy. The flies this year have been mental. We've had so many and we've had these big blow flies all summer, which is really unusual. Big blue bottles and big stripy green things. I mean, when you consider we're heading now into winter, the weather's been quite up and down temperature wise. It's um, We've still had a lot of flies. They're usually gone by now. There we go, I made it fit. I just stacked them up a little bit higher. So I'm just going to put those into the fridge and let them set because I think they need to be away from these flies that are hanging around. So as I said, I've made those at 70-30 uh, ratio and so that fat is really nice and evenly distributed uh, in amongst all that meat. Um, so if I want to work out how many calories, how much protein and fat is in each one, I just take the, the total of my batch and then divide that by six because I've uh, put them into six fairly equal um, muffin trays. And I thought one of the reasons that I might use muffin trays is it makes them easier to store if I want to store them into a, in a jar or something because if you store them in a airtight container, as I said, they'll last for years and just pop them somewhere out of the light, you know, in the pantry or whatever, uh, or in a wardrobe somewhere and they're there for a long time. So, or can be. So um, they are the perfect... Um, um, 
emergency food for carnivores, uh, something that you can keep for years. But even like for me and, and hubby, I thought, you know, these are things that we can take out if we're going shopping or something and don't have time for lunch or whatever, or we're just going out for the day. You can pop one into a Ziploc bag and take it with you and eat while you're on the run. Absolutely perfect. So um, I'll be trying those once they come out and I'll be back to report what I think. So here are my finished pemmican little cupcakes <laughs> and I'm going to have a little taste, I already tried a little piece earlier. Actually tastes okay. I've got um, probably the right amount of salt in there, I think, and yeah. So that's that's pemmican. That's how to make it. Um, if you have any questions um, about what I've done or any comments, please pop them below, and I'll get to them as soon as I can. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe and um, like and share with uh, share with anybody you think might be interested. I thank you very much for watching and I'll talk to you again another day. Bye bye for now.